ओके गाइज सो सो फार वी हेव टॉक्ट अबाउट द इंट्रोडक्टरी वीडियो अबाउट द स्टेडी शेको लाइक नाउ इन दिस पर्टिकुलर ट्यूटोरियल विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द इन्फेक्टिविटी ऑफ स्टेडी शेको लाइक विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट इन्फेक्टिविटी इन्फेक्टिविटी ऑफ इको लाइक now among the infectivity of e coli what we know is that there are several different types of e coli depending upon their the type of infection they cause now usually there are four major types of e coli depending upon the infection now generally all of this enterobacter type of species or all this gut living bacteria they are related to any kind of gastrointestinal diseases abdominal cramps diarrhea and all these different types of symptoms more or less the symptoms are same for all the different types of diseases and so on in case of uh, escherichia coli also we can see those type of uh, symptoms right but in 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 case of uh, depending upon the type of uh, or the causative agent of the disease so some of this uh, escherichia coli some of the escherichia coli bacteria can cause the disease using heat labile toxin some of them causing this disease using heat sensitive toxin some of them causing this disease simply by hemorrhagic uh, nature and all these things and obviously by any kind of Uh, other means of this disease okay so depending upon this disease we can divide the escherichia coli in four different groups so let me write so depending upon the disease so let me write as e coli it is better known as e coli so e coli we can divide this e coli into four different sections and what are those sections one uh, the first one i am going to write as e t e c or entero uh, toxigenic so let me write entero toxigenic E. coli, so enterotoxigenic E. coli, and it is termed as enterotoxigenic. So we'll be taking here. So let us let us take E here, T here, E here, and C here. So E. T. E. C. It is termed as E. T. E. C or enterotoxigenic E. coli. Now the second type of E. coli that we 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 know is enteropathogenic E. coli. So enteropathogenic. So let me write entero pathogenic e coli okay now this one uh, so let us write the terms here it is e here it is p then we are having e and c so e p e c it will be termed as e p e and c so enteropathogenic e coli now the third type of example is enterohemorrhagic e coli so let me write entero hemorrhagic so the hemorrhagic h e m o hemorrhagic r r h a g i c enter hemorrhagic e coli so this is the third kind and the, and it is also called as e h e c so enter hemorrhagic e coli or e h e c the third kind and the last kind so let me write the last kind here fourth kind i'm going to talk about is entero invasive entero invasive e coli okay and this one so let me write it e i e c so entero invasive e coli or e i e c so these are the four different types of e coli that we are going to talk about okay so depending upon the type of infection they cause Now the first one was or entero toxigenic e coli it causes what we know as a travelers diarrhea a travelers diarrhea sorry travelers sorry for the bad handwriting though travelers diarrhea now for this travelers diarrhea what it does actually it causes a kind of watery diarrhea and obviously abdominal cramp is associated with it in case of this enterotoxigenic e coli most of the time this for this kind of uh, enterotoxigenic strain of e coli what they do actually they are changing they are they are elevating uh, the concentration of cyclic amp inside the cells so as a result of this elevation concentration of cyclic amp inside the cell of our endothelium lining inside our gut those cells start to lose water as well as start to lose uh, other type of ions like chlorine ions outside so as they are move releasing water and chlorine outside the gut becomes extremely fluid in a limited amount of time so that it results in the very very watery kind of diarrhea okay and the reason for that is the continuous signaling of cyclic amp amp 
so the cyclic AMP to on and on and on throughout the time because you know that cyclic AMP is acting as a messenger during the uh, signal transduction pathway right now the signal that brings to cyclic AMP to, to rise the concentration of cyclic AMP will be conveyed by a kind of a signal receptor now in this case of uh, this enterotoxigenic E. coli they produce a toxin right so it's a toxigenic right it produces a kind of toxin so that heat uh, labile toxin so it, we call it an LT or heat labile toxin now this heat labile toxin will go and bind with that receptor for that signaling and it binds with it throughout the time so that the signal is on and on and it is telling this cyclic AMP concentration to go on and on and on and high and as a result of that it results in the release of water and chlorine ionides outside into the gut and the cell become dehydrated and the gut becomes extremely fluid right so that is uh, the actual case of enterotoxigenic E. coli and again this kind of disease is uh, mostly seen in all this kind of disease are related to hygiene and it, they are mostly seen in developing countries where, where they are poor uh, sanitation is there and all these things okay so these things matter actually okay now the second type of strain is called the enteropathogenic E. coli now this enteropathogenic E. coli is it is again causing uh, watery diarrhea and this watery diarrhea caused by enteropathogenic E. coli is for a long duration so it's for a long duration and also this kind of disease or this kind of condition is caused in a newborn they are caused in newborn mostly in infants why because in those cases this kind of infection can be sprayed, uh, spread from their mother to the newborn and obviously this this is a result of oral fecal transformation in both this case enterotoxigenic E. coli uh, and also enteropathogenic E. coli in both these cases they causes this kind of colitis or in this kind of diarrhea kind of symptoms in all these cases uh, the reason for that is oral fecal so let me write it's it's oral fecal or fecal oral whatever fecal oral uh, transfer of this bacteria right so so the poisoning of this bacteria usually uh, transfer uh, transferred via the water or food sources right so for both these cases this is the region reason but enteropathogenic E. coli is persistent for a longer period of time and it is affecting the newborn or the infants okay and mostly they are seen in uh, developing countries like India is an example for that Africa is another example like that okay now here it is uh, the third kind the enterohemorrhagic E. coli and this kind of E. coli is pretty dangerous remember I've talked about a member of this enterohemorrhagic E. coli and that member is uh, AOH uh, what is it O157 H7 right so that particular strain is uh, one of the EHEC member and for this reason this kind of Escherichia coli generally cause diseases using in endotoxin a kind of endotoxin so endotoxin now this endotoxin we know is from the LPS right and this kind of condition what, what it results in uh, the rupturation of uh, blood blood and it, it also lead to the uh, what you can say cut in our blood vessel as a result blood will flow along with the uh, along with urine as well as along with uh, stool and as a result it will result in the bloody diarrhea okay that's why they are called the hemorrhagic colitis because in this case they start to break down the RBC so RBC so let me write RBC breakdown RBC breakdown and also blood vessel breakdown as a result of that red blood cells coming out and it results in the bloody diarrhea and this can also related with uh, the urinogenital uh, kind of region and it is then called the combinatory effect is called the hemolytic uremic syndrome or HUS it is called hemolytic hemolytic uremic syndrome or HUS hemolytic uremic syndrome or HUS okay so this these all things are coming from the enterohemorrhagic E. coli so this is a, one of the most dangerous kind of condition and the fourth one is the entero invasive E. coli now entero invasive E. coli again it causes bloody diarrhea so it again causes bloody diarrhea so let me write bloody diarrhea okay and the reason for that again they are producing a kind of toxin again the reason is a kind of toxin and this kind of enter invasive E. coli and all these things they can only activated they can only be activated when they are transferred to the bloodstream so normally when they are present in gut they are non-pathogenic but when they are transferred to the bloodstream 
blood stream in those cases they become very much pathogenic and cause a severe diarrhea okay so in all these cases you have seen all this infectivity leads to most of the cases bloody diarrhea and almost all the disease these symptoms are called colitis and they are related to diarrhea a little bit uh, not a little bit but a longer extent and obviously sometimes they related to hemolytic uremic syndrome or that means uh, blood is coming out uh, with urea or with urine so it's hus is associated so all these things are the part of it okay so that's the inef infectivity about all the escherichia coli uh, most most pathogenic escherichia coli types and obviously there are other kinds uh, but we, i'm not going to talk about them so that's it and i hope that's helpful thank you